Voyager. Alright guys, and we are live here at Versus. Right now it's going to be just myself for a little bit. DC's running late. But we're going to start off with some doubles. We have uh, Team CGC, which is going to be a Little Mac. Lu what was it? Oh, there it is. Ooh, we got Villager for sure. And looks like we're going to have a Jigglypuff. Versus, of course, we got Boba. And we got Zig running the... Uh, Run Little Mac and Rosalina and Luma. So hopefully this, this should be really good. Aw, oh, man. But yeah, Little Mac. <sighs> Little Mac and Luma, that's that's definitely an interesting combo. They're going to have definitely have a hard time trying to catch with a uh, catch Villager and Jigglypuff. Jigglypuff is going to be flying around the stage, hopefully, and Villager is going to be shooting people in the face with that slingshot. It's going to be really annoying for for the other team. Let's uh, see where they go. Ooh, Battlefield. Definitely not Smashville like like people normally go, but this is going to be a lot more compact stage. It's going to be a lot easier for the uh, for the red team to catch them. Ready? We have Boba just doing like three up smashes in a row. Of course, Lil Mac going for a signature three down tilts into a four tilt for a good old 42% on the villager. Very hectic match, but blue team and Zig. Oh, Zig is just taking control of the stage as Lil Mac does. And wow, villagers are right off the stage, and Luma goes off as well. But red team is just taking control of center stage. Oh no, that is not a good way to start off the match by missing a rest. Hopefully, uh, Blue Team will be able to pull this back as they're at a two stock deficit. It's not a good sign. Uh oh, Lord Mac is just a bit off from getting that KO punch. And I've, I've learned from this weekend that, oh, never mind, that, that. KO Punch is gone, but if the Lil Mac can manage to hold on to it, he can easily do three down tilts into a KO Punch and it combos, but that's all in the past now, but they're still controlling the stage, they still have stage control. Oh wow, Zig is fighting off stage, for his life off stage, and speaking of his life, ooh, DC Gray Fox just got up smashed all the way into the background and uh oh. So did his partner. This is definitely not a good start for the blue team. Yeah, unless the blue team is able to reclaim center state. Wow, Zigbar punching out his partner. But but that's okay though. He's gonna be getting KO punched here in a little bit. And again, he could just combo right into KO Punch using just a couple of down tilts. It's good. Those are some good up airs by, uh, by Poba. And there we go. We have that KO Punch. Zig could just hold on to that this entire time. Oh, and he, Boba accidentally knocks his partner out using the jab from Rosalina. Which is a shame to see, but... Either way, it doesn't matter. The villager is going to need to do a, a lot of work. And there goes that down smash. Yeah, there, there's really not much villager could be able to do. Villager is all about stage control. And with Little back there, Rosalina with all that space control, there's no way they're able to bring it back. 
Oh, it's gonna be really hard for the uh, for Team CGC to bring this back if they're gonna do the same performance that they had in the first game. They need to uh, assume stage control, or at the very least, just try to poke the opposing team out using the villagers' high mobility and ability to poke. Oh, and on the mic, we we have DSS. Dark Supersonic here, hopping on the mic to help commentate for the match. Hello, everyone. All right, so DSS are going to be taking a... Uh, Taking them to Delfino Plaza. What do you think about this stage for, for Rosalina and Luba? You know, I feel like they took it here because they would have an advantage with the sharking, but you also give Little Mac that opportunity to transition to other stages where it's going to be flat and it's like a walk-off part, and that's good for Little Mac. So I'm kind of conflicted on this counter for them. But we'll see how it works out. <laughs> Testing, testing. Does that work? Uh, I think I can hear you. Can you hear me? Okay. Yeah, I can hear you. All right, that's good. I don't know if the stream heard what I said. Ooh, all right. So red team is red team is definitely in control of center stage right now. Another thing about the stage is it has low ceilings, and that it gives characters who have like uh, don't have many kill options a potential kill to get kill options, but it also gives characters like Little Mac the opportunity to kill you very early. Ooh, Ooh, nice rest. That from is a great, great box. rest. Yeah, these, these low ceilings, especially if I remember correctly, these transitions lowers the ceiling at this point yeah. in time too. And we saw that earlier when Rosa did her up air and killed the villager around 60, I believe. Oh, or, 60. Jigglypuff at 60. Ow, that is, that is not a percent that you want to be tying at. Definitely not. Oh, I always <laughs> hated this transition. Or no, this stage in particular, there's no ledges, the sides are really close, and like that forward smash right there, it feels... Ooh. Or that down smash! A double kill by wow. Little Mac. It's gonna be a very high hill for the red team to climb right now, or the blue team. Yeah, the blue team is gonna have to put in a lot of work. He now, I think at this point right here, that the blue team should really focus on Little Mac, and use him as bait. Try to like throw him off stage, and you'll see Rosa coming to his aid. And at that opportunity is when you should punish Rosa. That's that's true. Little Mac does not have a lot of aerial mobility off stage. When you compare it to, like, Villager and Jigglypuff, yeah. they can just combo him off the stage. Now, right here again. is where they're going to want to be careful, because this is when Little Mac is definitely at his strongest. Yeah. When you have stages that are walk-offs, and he doesn't have to worry about being thrown off stage. Exactly. Ooh, that was a, that was a good finish. Ooh, and up air from Rosa. Ah, those low ceilings once again. So I was talking to some uh, talking to Boba, and he said that you're gonna want to di behind Rosa when she goes in for her up airs because the back oh. of her up air is significantly weaker than the front of her up air. Oh, that makes sense because I remember also him telling me that if you uh, hit with Rosalina and uh, Luma at the same time, mm -hmm. it incre it like doubles the uh, the power and knockback. Oh wow! So it kills a lot earlier, of course, does more damage. Rosa's sitting at three full stocks. This seems like a Huge uphill battle for Villager. Yeah, there's not really much that Villager should be able to do because yeah. Villager's all about stage control, and when all you do is able to do is sit at the edge. That's, and that's... Rosa steal, steals the game right there. And I'm up for tournament right now, so oh. I'm Ooh. going to have to leave you back to soloing it. Oh, all right. Well, now Diaz is leaving me, and hopefully he's going to be on stream in a little bit. So how's it going, stream? That was a, that was fortunately that was a that was a pretty one-sided match. I, you know, I actually don't know the name of the player who uh, who's playing Villager, unfortunately. Yo, what's up, Tacos? So. Ooh, thank, thank you so much. 
Yeah, I've been I've been resting for the last five days, just trying to get my voice back, and it's it's working. It's definitely working. Drinking a lot of tea and whatnot helps your voice out. Clapper. Hyrule Temple. All right, Diaz is just messing around right now while we, we wait for the next team to come up. DC is actually getting, DC is actually running a little late. Hopefully, uh, he said he would be here around nine with Sean. So I'm gonna be have to be uh, going solo for the next half hour. And thank you so much, Warren. But yeah, we, we have a good amount of people here. Yeah, DC's going to be coming shortly after 9. I believe uh, he's going to be showing up with Sean as well. Alright, so we just need to get the, the team names here. Yep, every, every Tuesday, this is, this is Versus Tournament. At Nopita Golfland, we host it every single Tuesday, and this is definitely the place to be if you want to see some of the more higher-level matches in uh, Northern California. Because we have a lot of uh, we have a lot of names here that are on the PR. Some of our our better names here in uh, Northern California come to uh, come here every single Tuesday, and this is definitely the place to be if you want to. Uh, you want to get some high-level matches. Ta tacos, please. Ta tacos, please. Uh, you. So on Tuesdays it's it's Smash, and then of course on uh on Fridays is uh SF4. Oh. No more Fridays? Ah, oh, never mind. No more Fridays. But. Mm. So, it's actually every week that uh, the games will get rotated. So. Alright, so. We have Team UC Smash versus Team Ghost. Let's see, uh, let's see if they pick. All right, so we got a, ooh, a Pikachu and Dark Pit combo. Oh wait, unless this is this is, U, this is the UC boys, but the UC boys—they've been showing up to uh, this tournament like every single week, and they've been doing nothing but putting in work, 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 work. Always placing consistent top three. It's just. Doing great work with that uh, that Diddy Kong and uh, that Ness. Their synergy is just absolutely amazing as well. And when it comes to uh, one of the higher level doubles teams in this area, they're they're definitely it. All right, so we're gonna be going straight into Smash. To uh, straight in the Smashville. One, oh, this array looking very, very hectic. I believe it's the blue team. Oh, they split up. Blue team is pushing the green team off the stage. Of course, we have the signature down throw up air, up air. By uh, Diddy Kong. Three high. Oh, we tried to go for that spike, but that was a really good forward air to prevent it. Oh, goodness. That was, uh, that is not a good sign getting PK Thunder 2 at such a low percent. Right in the face. But, 
stocks are even right back up again. That was a good combo. Down throw to neutral air. Ooh, right into that up smash. Oh, there goes Pikachu. Getting back throwed right at the edge. That is not the place where you want to be against an S. Just because the closer you are to that edge, the lower the percent that you need to be in order to down throw to kill you. Oh, that was a good forward throw. Yeah, it did that like two times. Alright. Oh, that was a great up air by DSS. Killing, uh. From the opposing nest right off of the top. Oh, wow, that lingering hitbox from the PK Thunder 2 is what did him in. And wow, this... This Ness is just going straight for PK Thunder after PK Thunder after PK Thunder 2. Hoping he hits somebody. But hey, why not? He's already gotten a couple hits. Oh! Ooh, I'm sorry about that, but that was a... Uh, that was a great way to kill him off. Just absorbing that PK Thunder 2 with the side magnet. And of course, reading the roll from the Pikachu and getting that forward smash. That was, uh... Ooh, that was nasty. That was straight up nasty. Alright, let's... Let's see where uh, where Team Ghost is going to go. Oh, looks like they're trying to uh, they're switching around right now. So now we have a Nest Captain Falcon versus uh, Diddy Captain Falcon. Or, or excuse me, Nest Little Mac, Nest Little Mac versus Diddy Kong Captain Falcon. Almost on battlefield. This is already a good sign for the blue team, assuming uh, assuming center stage, which is where you want to be. Because if you're center stage, you're, you're not closer to the sides of the edge. So. Oh, that was nice. Green team getting control of center stage. And there we go, it goes right back to the blue team. Oh, they have to watch out for that little Mac. Well, unless he uh, he botches it like that, but normally as a little Mac, you want to look for those down tilt combos so you can combo right into your uh, right into your KO punch if they are at low percent. That was a good recovery by the uh, by the opposing mass. Ooh, and a forward smash by DSS. He is using. Man, that, that Ness is using those back throws very, uh... Just over and over again. That is something you don't want to do. You want to... Whenever you throw out moves, you want to also watch out for, for hit decay. For, for decay on your moves. If you use a move over and over and over again, the hit, uh, the knockback, as well as the power on the move will go down. And that is something you definitely don't want to do, especially on one of your kill moves. Oh, that is an unfortunate death by uh, by the little Mac. And everyone is just flying off stage back and forth. Ooh, DSS almost getting that knee and making sure that uh that three high could easily recover. Wow. DSS is being disrespectful. 
But I mean, they could they could definitely afford to with the uh, the stock lead that they have right now over the opposing team. Uh, the Ness is trying to get stage control, but he's this is gonna be really hard. This is definitely gonna be an uphill battle for him, especially in two v ones. He's he's not doing a bad job at it right now, though. Oh, but he's just, he's just rolling around, trying to get those spare hits in where he can. Nice. Of course, we have the signature uh, Diddy Kong down throw up air right there. He just cannot close out the stock. This Ness has just been avoiding them over and over again. Oh, they are trying to go for the down throw knee. Yeah, they're just tr they're just trying to style on this nest right now. This nest is just avoiding them over and over again. Just trying to do what he can. Oh, that up till. Oh wow, it did not close out the stock. And there goes the knee, especially at like 110 percent. That is going to take you out. That was a that was a good effort though by the uh, the blue team, by Team Ghost. So, but of course, uh, UC UC boys taking it once again. Uh, thanks thanks a bunch, Dave. But oh, that was just unfortunate. They were, you could tell the um, the blue team did not have stage control like at all, and they were just much lesser experienced players. Against uh, probably one of the stronger teams in the region right now. I definitely don't. Well, the strong uh, one of the things you definitely need in this game is great team synergy. And that's that's definitely what they have right now. I am not lonely at all. I have you guys on the stream. So. And it's... I have a lot of fun doing this. Yeah, yeah. Young Peng. <laughs> so, so who's in the chat right now, though? Let, let, let me see some ones. What? And don't don't worry about it. So. Yeah, this that opposing team just had that synergy. There's there's not really anything the blue team could have done about it. Ones. Okay. Alright, we're going to be taking a short break right now, so we'll be back. I'll be right back with you guys.
And we're back. That was a. Uh, those are some interesting friendlies I just watched. Alright. Oh. Yeah, it looks like we're just doing friendlies for now. Till, uh. Still taking that short break, but. Still love to talk to you guys. Oh boy, the Ganondorf Zelda matchup. Or not. What's up, stream? We're back. Oh, there we go. All right, so we're just doing a friendlies. But 
end is actually really good. It's, it's actually really horrifying. If it wasn't for the fact that his air to ground game was completely kind of bad. So, alright, so we got three high DSS. I know Sean's coming by. Of course, DC is going to be here. Zigbar. See here. Mm. Ooh. Now that'll be though. That up smash though. Ooh. That Zelda hurts so much. Wow, Zelda with her up it's so dumb. <laughs> um. Down throw. Ooh, up air. The Nanners, who's uh who's Trex? But once, once the singles match is done, though, hopefully we're going to be getting a doubles match on here soon. Hmm. Oh, is Sky Raider still a thing? So we have the UC boys hopping back right back onto the, uh... Survival. Right back on. Oh, Santa Rosa. I was about... Okay, my... My bad. My bad. I... I oh, God. I, I am so sorry. I was thinking of com something completely different. <laughs> I, I, I am so sorry. Oh god. It uh it, it brought back that cough. I've been trying to keep down the entire time. Just by speaking that name, I'm dying again. <laughs> hey, apology man. Apology man, hopping on that Smash 4 doubles. Here is actually really, really good in this game. But this is my this is personally my first time seeing him ever perform. As uh, he has not been in any of the tournaments that I've been to. So this is actually gonna be quite a treat for me. And everyone else in the chat. Oh, what's up, Bubble Yum? I... Yo, that, uh... Is, is, is that JoJo's Bizarre Adventures? Right? Alright, so we have the Oingo Boingo Brothers. Shout out to JoJo's Bizarre Adventure references. That is... That is amazing. I love that series. It's so good. Yeah, no, the uh, the Davis tournament had 84 entrants. That is... It was either 84 or 82 entrants. Either way, though, like... That is probably one of the bigger tournament... Like, turnouts, uh... So far. Not a cop. Alright, 
Alright, so we have Team JoJo's Bizarre Adventure, aka the Oingo Boingo Brothers, versus Team UC Smash. Ooh. Ooh, Villager Shulk, though. That is definitely going to be an interesting combination. Villager, of course, always providing that great stage control and Shulk doing his Shulk thing and just comboing you for days and, of course, having that amazing uh, kill potential. Oh, uh, but, of course, the UC boys bring that, uh, that great experience that they have. Great bringing Villager to 70%, this is not a good sign of uh, things to come. Hopefully the red team's gonna be able to bring back and oh! Look who just came in! Oh. Are we good? Are we good? Is, is, is this DC hear me? Yes sir, DC is in the building. Sorry I'm a bit late guys, had some things to do, but we are in a match against, what, Team UC Smash? The boys who made it to Grand Finals last week. Who is Team Oingo Boingo? Oingo, the Oingo Boingo Brothers. Oingo Boingo Brothers. Uh, Venice and not a cop. Oh, I see. Oh, uh, Apology Man. It's surprising that he's not playing his Lucario in this match. Oh, he's a Lucario man. Yes. He's Ooh. a Lucario man. I, cause I, this is my first time actually seeing him perform in tournament. Yeah, well, it looks like he's not a stranger to doubles right now. Mm -hmm. Actually doing very, very well, keeping up in stocks. It's surprising. I haven't seen this team team up before. Uh-uh, neither. But they're going up against one of the strongest doubles teams that we've seen every single week. With the UC, the UC Smash Boys yep. have been doing better every single week, placing a little bit farther. And, uh, let's see. What round is this, Mr. Big? This is actually the first round. You just you, you came in perfect time. First perfect match. Timing. First match of doubles. First match. We've got a three to two stock situation. The UC boys actually down in oh, stock wow. against this new team, this brand new team, the Oingo Boingo boys, <laughs> playing Villager Shulk. Uh oh. That that is not a good recovery by Shulk because Shulk's recovery is super low. That's definitely something you do not want to see in one of the game-changing moments of the match. Oh, but well, that was a good recovery by Villager. Make sure to avoid that PK Thunder, too. Shulk is actually doing a pretty good job here of just laying on the damage, not taking too much percent himself. Red Team is in a sandwich position, but looks like DSS is trying to break everything up with his trademark grabs, honestly. Mm -hmm. and of course, those good old forward airs, those things just last forever. They just last for way too long. They have an amazing priority. Ooh, try to go for that stage by putting the work out for him. Yeah, the strength of disjointed hitboxes in Ness's kit is not to be underestimated. No, it is. <laughs> no, it is not. That no, I think. Unfortunate team kill though, with an up air from Ness taking out the stock of Diddy Ooh. Kong and a back air out of Villager is going to close out game one, going to Team Oingo Boingo, Boingo Brothers. The Oingo Boingo Brothers taking game number one over to UC Smash. Yeah, so UC Smash not looking as strong as they usually do. Mm -mm. Being that, I mean, these guys usually do not drop games until about losers finals. Yeah. It's very it's unusual, but game one, they're having some trouble. I don't think that these guys are necessarily playing poorly. I think this Team Oingo Boingo is a a team of strong competitors. I have seen Apology Man play before. He's very, very proficient with Lucario. I believe he's going to up in this matchup. I believe so. Well, what we do know for sure is that the first game has gone over to the red team. But the green team is counterpicking on their favorite stage. Delfino Plaza, okay. and it's working out for them being that they took the first stock off of Villager and are sitting at fairly low stocks right now. Oh, yeah, and they... I, I just remember uh, DSS hopped on the mic earlier, and he just loves the stage because of the low ceiling and the low sides, as you can see here, and it just provided an early kill at, like, almost 70%. 
That's true, but Villager is going to feel really comfortable on a stage where the platforms are moving around, so Villager can stay in the air where he likes to be, throw out projectiles, be super safe, and uh, be in that position where when everyone's moving around, he can control that space that they want to be moving around in. Very smart play to, to stick with Villager so far. The UC Smash boys are having a little bit of a problem right now, but let's see if DSS can get some spikes. Nope. It's true. Well, they are sitting at a decent stock lead. Uh oh. Well, commentators curse, they <laughs> were sitting on a good stock lead. It's pretty even right now. But, you know, these, these transformations, there's always that time where the ceiling is very, very low to the ground. And one thing that we haven't really talked about is we know that Diddy Kong has a great up air, but yes. Ness has an amazing up air as well. well that is true. Killing fairly early, and on this stage, I'd say about 70% from a, a strong hit. It would Ooh. probably kill during the transformation. Uh, and another thing, of course, those close sides, that back throw from Ness killing once again. A really, really great move to depend on, especially in doubles where grabs are almost readily available. Another grab coming out, oh my goodness. making it so that the UC Smash boys are ahead by one stop and a little bit of percent. Let's see how they fare in just this clustered area. They're not trying to... Oh, oh that forward smash! It was a bad move to stay in that clustered area. When they have such a lead, they don't have to go for an all-out brawl. Mm -hmm. And Ty Lee, aka 3-High, ended up taking a full a bowling ball to the <laughs> dome <laughs> for that mistake that they ended up making. There. And that bowling ball hurts. It could easily kill at like 80%, 70 So if you get hit by that thing, it is no bueno. But now, it's a, but now it's a 2v1 situation. This is not looking good. Oh, and the spacing was perfect. That was with amazing that grab. spacing. I was expecting the back throw, but 3-high was ready and charged to go for that one. That Looks like these guys have been putting in a little bit more time in the lab. That was a full charge forward smash, too. So now the score is 1-1. So we're moving on to game three versus these two teams. Now it's going to be a switch from Shulk to Ike. Oh, that they is it. From the Monando to that, <laughs> <laughs> that the giant. Monando. Actually, what is the name of Ike's blade? Do you know? I I wish I was more into the Fire Emblem series. You know what? This is just going to be the, the trivia of the day for everybody in the chat. Oh. People who know the name of Ike's blade, they get a special, they'll get a hug next time they see me. Very Ooh. Good. Uh, trademark DC hug. Well, these guys are going right into the third match on Town and City. Good choice. Uh, I think that the red team will have more space here for Villager to do his work. I can always lay down some very strong punishes, so uh, having some setups with Villager's projectiles is going to be very nice for Ike. If he can at least read when they're going to be there, hopefully that teamwork will help out a lot. But look at the combos coming out right now of Bongo. Boingo. Of course, though, the, uh, with the Town and City pick, it also Ooh. does benefit the green team a little bit as well, because this is one of the stages that has a much lower ceiling and much closer sides. And with DSS's amazing just awareness of the stage, mm. going, hey, I know that if I up E right here, I'm going to ride up the side of the platform, and it definitely crushed out Villager, mm -hmm. and he also ended up taking a hit straight off of uh, Ike. Ike side B ended up clashing with him and two, the first two stocks went over to the green team. Green team is definitely feeling very nice about their position right now, being a stock up on each character. Having the red team on the defensive right now, trying to return to the stage. But this is going to be a difficult time trying to come back down because Villager covers a lot of space. That Nair is... Oh, that a was a pressure. terrible team kill. Yeah, a very unfortunate, but... I mean, you don't want to make those moves, but the UC Smash Boys definitely had the stocks free to do it. Very well placed back air. Oh, but Villager's recovery is definitely one of the best, if not the best recovery in the game. Recovering from practically anywhere. Oh, but that was a great up B. Incredible. Like, Actually, DSS talked to me earlier this week, and he asked, hey, what are some of the things that I should improve on? Where can I, I end up changing up my game so we could be a little bit stronger? And I think his awareness of when to go for those uppies and when not to is exceptionally clear right now. <laughs> he has just been on point with those uppies, like, every single time. Uh-oh. Oh, almost a double team kill right there, but 
that only ties up the stocks until the, another back throw from DSS. DSS has these amazing grabs, but Boingo and Oingo, <laughs> uh, you can see their team synergy. I think they really just need to play to the stage a little bit more and try a little bit more zoning. The character composition, kind of strange. I wants to be up close in that uh, kind of Marth-esque range. And the Villager wants to be very far behind. Maybe they were looking for a, uh, a point and support situation there. Maybe. Played out very strongly by these characters. Right now, though, that kind of change is not helping out. At no, oh, my goodness. I it's eat my even, words. It's even up already. That was a pocket. Pocket oh. that up. Oh, that's what happened. Yeah. <laughs> Oigo was like, hey, man, I know this matchup. Now it is a 2v1 situation. Make that a 1v1. Ness at only 19%. And that bat, bat reflecting back to that man saying, hey, I don't want it. It was broken. Take it back <laughs> and give me a new one. That, that was, was great a, work. That was a very, very even game. That was I close. Was down to the wire. That was down to the wire. And I really, I mean, okay. I love the red team. I think that they showed a brand new dynamic. They're a brand new team on, I guess you could say, the weekly circuit. Mm. And these guys played a really nice game. I wish they would have stuck to their original characters, yeah. but I mean, but. changing it up sometimes can help. Uh, the UC Smash Boys, they blow me away every week. Oh yeah. Every week, they, ha they stick to the same composition. They study their matches after tournaments are over, mm. and they've been shown to go and compete with some of the best the best teams out there. Yeah, no, they just have amazing team synergy, and it shows every single match that they play in every single week, and they're just getting yes. better and better and better and better. And also, they answered the trivia question. Oh. It's Aether. The name of Ike's Blade is Aether. Aether. That's why he says, you know, when he does the special, he says, like, Aether. something Aether. Okay, no, that yeah. makes sense. Okay. I think uh, G-Shark wins. G-Shark wins our little trivia game here. But um, everyone... It's nice to see your lovely faces. Mm -hmm. Basically, just you, Mr. Pink. You're the only face. Oh, oh thank you. Uh, <laughs> thank you so much. <laughs> I'm so glad you're back. I'm, Welcome I'm back, Mr. Pink, everybody. Mm -hmm. He was gone. He was sick. Oh. And it, it was a struggle. But we had Santa Rosa come and hold it down last week. Versus is back mm -hmm. and popping off, as always. There are so many people in this room right now. There are. Versus is, it, like, for Smash 4, Versus is killing it. This is where you so supportive. There. This is where you want to be this every is where single Where you want to be, and this is where Zig and Boba are teaming together. I believe for the first time at Versus. Oh, is it? Yeah, I don't believe they've teamed together at Versus before. Uh, mm. I know that Boba is a Rosa Rose main, mm -hmm. and Zig plays Little Mac. Yes. I've never seen those two characters team together before, but just thinking off the top of my head. Off the top of my head, I think that would be an amazing team. Actually, they did play uh, earlier when, when you weren't here, and they just had nothing but stage control the wow. entire time. Because Rosalina and Luma is just able to take up like half of the stage. Right. And then the other half, and there's Little Mac. And he is nothing but pure stage control. And Little Mac puts out damage for every little mistake you ever have. Zig being like... This crazy little mech. I, I don't know the adjective to apply to Zig. Just so patient and so aware. Zig shows people, in my opinion, how little mech needs to be played. And in teams, if you have a partner like Boba who's super, super uh, available, I should yeah. say, as a doubles partner, to be able to put on pressure, to have Luma... Uh, kind of setting up Zig for some hard punishes. I can see a lot of damage and a full force team coming out here. Oh, wait. The sword is the Ragnell, actually. Ragnell. Okay, so C4. Ah, oh, this is my first time seeing C4. I've heard a oh. lot of stories about him. He's been placing pretty high in tournaments, but they haven't been streamed, so I haven't been able to see him. Mm. Um, C4 has been kind of that, that hidden player recently. He's been placing really well. He's playing Wario along with, uh, looks like D Pain is playing Captain Falcon. Hmm. Up B doesn't end up making it back to the stage. I don't know if these guys have teamed before, but Zig and uh, Zig and Boba, they are just sticking on different sides of the stage, pummeling the blue team back and forth. Zig laying down a couple of just tilts, 
Oh. Nice down smash there. Ends up going through the bottom of the stage and wow. touches out another stock of Captain Falcon. Yeah, the, the, the back part of the down smash is actually what got him and launched him off of the stage and killed him. But yeah, it's like I said before, oh, uh, wow. Rosalina and Luma is just able to control one side of the stage, and Zig is just able to control the other side of the stage, and they just have such great stage control. Oh, oh, they that had an was opportunity a there, but Captain Falcon with that amazing up B kill. Rosalina and Luma are still at a full three stocks though. It is five stocks to three in this doubles match. Boba able to drift way far back. Being that Rosalie Luma has an amazing recovery. Oh, yeah. Probably one of the better recoveries in the game, oh, too. Oh, Zig being very aware of that super armor. Super armor options are really, really good. Mm -hmm. uh, and I don't think people utilize them as well as Zig does because he knows that when they're coming in or charging with an attack, you don't have to just sit there and shield and go for a grab. You can straight up just do an attack that has super armor and punish them for, you know, not being aware of that option. It's it's pretty much a counter, but you take yeah. damage, but it, it just hits you back so strong. Yeah. Nothing hits as hard as Little Mac, that is for uh -oh. sure. Oh! oh stage spike coming out from the red team, a team, do, uh, a team, team kill. That was, uh, <laughs> that was an amazing downer hitting both, uh, both people on the red team. Oh, uh, but that Rosalina up smash, though, is just so good. It has so much power and it has so much range. A lot of knockback. Looks like I've been informed that Boba and Zig have teamed before at the Davis tournament. That was about a week ago. Oh. And I think that's why we're seeing this really strong team awareness. These guys are, they know where each other are going to be and they know what they want to accomplish. Zig is taking the ground. Boba's taking the air. C4, though, is really trying to break up kind of the formulaic movement of where the red team wants to be. It's going off stage. I don't always think that going off stage is a very uh, strong option no, it's in not. doubles. Oh, oh. Because look, on stage, Zig is just going to be running rampant, yeah. taking out stocks left and right. And, oh, wow. And of course, that Rosalina Luma up, air, up smash is so strong. So powerful. Rosalina Luma can kill at just ridiculously early percents, but if you're at that high percent, forget about it. Forget about it. <laughs> And it's, uh, it's surprisingly Luma that has all the knockback on Up Smash. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Rosalina by herself, if Luma's gone, Up Smash really doesn't do too much. But uh, if Luma's there, you, you got to watch out. Because also, if they both hit together at the same time, it does double the amount of knockback and damage. Well, that's definitely going to be putting these two players at an advantage mm -hmm. in that aerial situation. Let's see where the blue team ends up counterpicking here. Team D4 has an opportunity to make a couple of different edits here. Hmm. Try and change their game because, as as we said before, Zig is going to control the ground, and he does it very, very well. I feel like you need to put him into a 2v1 situation. Rely on grabs, put him off stage. Wario can... can he has such a good recovery That's with true. all these different options that... You can deal with uh, you can deal with Little Mac off stage. Throw out a fair, throw out a, a nair. That's gonna put Little Mac already in a position where he can't. Yeah, you, know, you, you definitely can't go don't want to be off stage, as Little Mac. That's just not where you want to be. Right. So that would be to deal with Zig. I don't think that Boba puts on a lot of pressure. I think that Boba is there to follow up whenever Zig is throwing people into the air with you know smash attacks, maybe some throws. But overall. There's an opportunity here, there and is. I think it might be a good one. Let's see what stage they go to. That's probably going to reflect what kind of uh, what kind of strategy they want to accomplish if they've got one in mind. A mega battlefield. That's an interesting choice. Hmm. Probably because of the uh, the low ceiling. And those stage bikes definitely were helping out in that last match. Well, that is true, but. I can only see this personally helping out um, Little Mac. Rosalina and Luma, and yeah, and of course Little Mac. Yeah. Little Mac just striving on uh, on flat stages as there's nowhere to run. Boba has Luma to control the space in front of her without really having to take damage, and Luma has, as you said, so much knockback on some of her moves that I don't think that Boba really has a lot of pressure being put on him. And Zig, just being able to control that floor space and let Luma stick to you know, using those aerial moves, which are, I mean, I feel like with those aerial moves when you have Luma, that's an advantage uh, immediately. It is. The spacing is going to be very difficult for anyone trying to counter her. And when you're uh, below Little Mac, 
Mm. He's going to be charging a smash. He's going to be going for a grab. And he's punishing really hard, taking stocks off of the blue team. He is. Oh, but that was a great fart. Just killing Luma. I, it looked like it was a low percent as well. Yeah, it was pretty low percent. If you, I believe it's the same one in this game. If you charge up a fart for about like a minute and 10 seconds or like 55 seconds, it has double the amount of knockback. As opposed to a fully charged fire, which is... That is a lot of knockback. It's going to be able to kill it at an uh, early percent. And that's, and that's what you need in doubles. Right now, Boba doing a good job of zoning out the blue team. They're trying to get back to the middle part of the stage. But Zig is there waiting. Down smash coming out of D-Paint. I bet Zig is feeling D-Paint. Oh. <laughs> oh, oh, dang it. Uh, Zig again, just going up and just... Feeling out the amount of knockback that Little Mac is able to bring to the table. Getting a little bit of information from GP here. Actually, the fully charged Waft is stronger in this game. Oh, is it? So waiting out for the full one is going to be probably the best move unless situ situationally uh, using a Waft is good. And C4 used it pretty well. Bulba's getting back onto the stage. It is four stocks to two. The blue team needs to put on the pressure, and that is what they are trying to do in this ledge situation. They're, they're definitely able to do it as well because Lu both Little Mac and Rosalina Room are uh, a fairly uh, oh, oh. respectable percent, unless that happens. Let's yeah, get Zig KO was punch. ready to go with that KO punch. Oh, that was a good air dodge by Zig getting back onto the stage with Little Mac. D Pain's got all the work to do right now. Boba was waiting for that up air, but D Pain ends up getting uh, that footstool. Oh, uh, Luma's just waiting out there. That's that's what you're able to do is Rosalina and Luma. Set Luma out there and just have uh, have her like control that section. Controlling space is definitely Rosalina's profession. And a down smash, very well spaced coming out of Zig. Zig, who, you know, took a break for a while, but as soon as he came back, I think it was about two or three months where Zig took a break. Yeah. But he came back onto the scene looking so strong. He ended up going against Sean, mm -hmm. getting down, getting Sean down to game three. Very, oh. very, very close game versus Diddy Kong. Um, he's been playing here in doubles now. He plays in double. Mm -hmm. He played in the doubles tournament with Boba mm -hmm. uh, just a couple days ago, and he is back looking really good. And Boba, of course, who's been here all along, yeah. cannot be slept on. Uh, the blue team, good effort from those guys. Mm -hmm. I feel like. That's one of those teams that they don't seem to have a strong doubles dynamic. Mm -hmm. Maybe because of a lack of knowledge of doubles and how you're supposed to utilize I mean, your stage preference, your your team synergy, all the options that you have. Yeah, doubles. But, you know, it's, it's hard to get into sometimes. Yeah, doubles is definitely one of those where the only way to, uh, to get around this is you just have to keep playing the department over and over and over again. Keep playing doubles matches. This is definitely not something you get to sit in the lab by yourself and practice. Right. Well... Everybody, remember, I'm going to pull up my phone. Ooh. Remember to tweet me at the Norcal DC if you have any shout outs that you want me to read at the Mr. Pink. I love how we're both the instead of the. It's uh -huh. a little more classic. <laughs> so it looks like Boba and Zig are going to be going up against against the UC Smash Boys. I know it's just UC Smash, Ooh. but I got to call them the boys because they're the my boys. boys you know? Oh, duh. <laughs> the, the UC Smash Boys. UC Smash Boys. And, um,. This is going to be a very interesting match because they're going to Smashville, mm -hmm. and that is the, the stage that UC Smash, they're very, very comfortable there. We oh, saw yeah. in the last tournament, they love to go there. Uh, for Boba and for Zig, as we saw, they're very, very strong in teams. Mm -hmm. I think they have what it takes to compete against the UC Smash team, but we'll have to see game one and see how it, uh, it all ends up panning out. And they're going eight player smash just so they have access to the yellow team. <laughs> That's they just want to be the yellow team. I really wish that was the color that you're able to access normally in, in regular smash, but... Oh, they're actually going straight to Battlefield for their first game. Straight to Battlefield rather than Smashville. Yeah. Interesting choice there. That is definitely interesting. Let's see them get into it. I think it's a smart pick to go to Battlefield. Zig is going to have a little bit harder of a time because the yellow team can always end up retreating to platforms. Oh, and yeah. it's very hard for oh, oh, Little Max to get bike. back from those edge situations when you have characters who are so good off stage. 
stocks are already in favor of the yellow team. But as we said, oh, red team has stars. great, great stage control. That's what's going to get the, the uh, red team through these matches. Zig laying down a lot of damage whenever any member of the yellow team is on stage. If you're at a, if you're at zero percent against Little Mac, he's just going to get two, three down tilts on you and a forward tilt, and that brought him like I'm already to like 33, 40 percent just off of those alone, and that's that's going to hurt you. Uh -oh. The red team is already in a position. Ooh to have a lead, but throwing those amazing throws coming out of DSS threw Zig off stage. Zig waited too long to use his double jump and up B and got stuck in a situation that Little Max often find themselves stuck in. Yeah. But Zig's putting pressure on three high right now. Yeah, Zig's, uh, Zig's actually got thrown off stage by a forward throw and then he was about to get forwarded by Ness and either his he option was to get, it. yeah, yeah. He air dodged it. And that was like his only option. That's a really good tilt off stage. Wow. The yellow team, they had too many flubs. Rosa Luma has been holding on to her stocks this entire time. Back throw is going to take it out, but that's still going to be three stocks. And it's I even. It's, it's, it's an even, it's even game. game. The yellow team has been known to be like this, though. They can come down to a deficit, and then they just turn on the Jets. And all of a sudden, the yellow team just has the, the control. They put on the pressure. And with Zig in a ledge situation right now, let's see how DSS responds. But three guys oh. trying to get back on. Oh, that up B not quite gonna make it. It's a 1v1 DSS versus Zig. This could go either way right now. Uh-oh. Oh, oh tried to go for the hard read. Good Lucky thing he was moves. at a lower percent, or otherwise that forward smash would have been the end of him. Laggy moves are not what you want to be looking for right now. I mean, you have all these disjoints as Ness, and you have some projectiles that you can't be using. You need to keep out. It. Little Max an inside boxer. Well, yeah, <laughs> In he this is. game, he's an inside boxer. He wants to get into your space. If you can, you know, throw on some pressure with projectiles, it's highly recommended. But keep him in the air like DSS is doing now, and he might have a chance. Yeah, he is definitely uh, someone you want to keep uh, keep grounded with. Good work uh -oh. here from DSS. Let's see if Zig can make it back onto the stage. Good use of that. Invincibility. Kale punches up getting wasted. The back throw. And That's Zig it. has that no option of getting that back on it. stage. Great job from both teams there. They, uh, yellow team bringing it back. That was, uh, they were down by two whole stocks. And they were able to even it up and bring it back. Man, that was very intense at the that end was. of that match there. It looked like there were these times where, you know, the energy of the flow shifted. <laughs> Somebody was in the lead over someone else. Like, the red team had a big lead against the yellow team for some time there. Uh, Little Luma, I mean, when they were up four stocks to two, they could have played a little bit more defensively, but I feel like... Little Mac can't really play that defensively. He has no. to be in your face. He has to be putting on pressure. Or you can completely ignore him. Or, you know, get a grab. Throw him off stage. You're not in a good position anymore. So let's see where the counter pick's going to be. Mm. Um, it's red team's pick. They're going to want an Omega. Hmm. But if you ban FD, that also bans Omega. Yes. I think Zig's probably, he look, he's talking to Boba right now. Mm -hmm. Zig probably knows something about Max Recovery. Yeah. And he's trying to tell him, like, hey, if you <laughs> go on this stage, I have a little bit more of an advantage. Oh, where is it that they would want to go, though? Let's find out. They could always just go town and city, of course, with the low ceilings and close sides, which results in earlier kills. Oh, we got the music counter picks. Um, music counter picks. This is very important. Music counter picks are extremely important. Mm -hmm. I honestly think that when you have the perfect music playing, it just puts you in an amazing spot. Like you, you feel the vibe. It pumps you up. It does. Gives you some focus. Of course, the uh, best place to practice is the uh, the Pikmin stage with the environmental noises. It's always my favorite. Yeah. Uh, my favorite stage, 
I'm lame. My favorite stage is Smashville. What? I'm so lame. Dude. Uh, that's okay though. You have a you have KK Slider playing in the background on his guitar. You know what though? I don't even like the music. What? Yeah, that's so that's what's so what? weird. I don't like the music. I just love Smashville. I think it's just because, um, it's just because I played there for so long. That's true. That's that's probably where, oh man, probably hundreds of thousands of matches have played, but. All right. All right, well, they're they're getting the run back, uh, but on the Omega version. And as we saw in uh, previous matches, the red team loves this stage. That's they can true. control so much space. They can put on pressure from close, from far away. And uh, I think it's a little bit easier for Boba to help Zig with recovery. That's true. And uh, Zig does not have to. Oh, my goodness. That four smash tilted upwards, killing Ness off at the top of the screen, like 68%. It was that was ridiculously low. That's true. I mean, what I really like about these teams is that they have strong dynamics. The red team, they are all about controlling space, and they are so good at it. The green team, they're all about getting those combos and getting those grabs, you know? They capitalize off of grabs so hard, and offstage, they are a huge threat. Once they polish their offstage work, you know, they could be one of the top teams, but oh, yeah. red team is showing right now, their punish game might end up winning them this. Ooh, but the, the stocks have been... Oh no, the red team is still up by one stock, and the Rosaluma has been holding onto that single stock for a long time. Boba's been playing really smart as a support. Yes. Just going for the aerials, doing very safe moves, taking safe options. But at the same time, staying back behind Zig when Zig wants to put on pressure. Because Zig has a great opportunities with his super mm -hmm. armor to put on a whole lot of pressure. Oh, but that was a bad recovery by, uh, by Boba right there. Not able to make it back. Waiting a little bit too long to up that's one of the strengths of the green team, though, is that green team has has conditioned their opponents to go, hey, if... Ooh! Oh. Great KO punch there. What? Little Mac just, just taking a full stock whenever he, he feels like it. That's, that's always the worst when you get hit by that, because it just stops for a few yeah. moments to be like, ah, gotcha. Everybody gets to sit and watch you get KO punched. Red team looks like they're in a great amount of control right now. Back air out of, out of DSS, taking another stock. Mm -hmm. But, it's three stocks to two. Ness getting that mid-range percent right now. Ooh. Oh no. Okay, he should be actually be able to make it back from here. He was from all the way at the top. Uh-oh. He has to sit out of the jump. Oh, but he just barely makes it back. Zig's in a bad spot right now, but he has the KO punch. Ends oh, up missing. It. I like that he DI's those throws so that he, can, he always goes up. <laughs> then he can use his second jump to clear the majority of the space. Three high though, taking a stock away from Rosalina. This game is pretty much even. Oh no, Zig is gone. He's not able to recover from that with uh, that angle. That recovery issue has proven to be huge, and the 2v1 combos out of the, the green team are going to make this nearly impossible for Boba. But Boba has 2v1s of his own. That's true, Rosalina. and, and Ness is at 120%. So he is able to close out that stock. Oh! That was really close. Free High just makes it back to the stage. It's completely even in percent. 55 to 53. And now let's see if Boba has some experience in the Diddy matchup. Three High's been getting better every single week. They're both going to be looking for those grab down throw up airs. Both of them. Oh, that was good spacing by Boba using Luma, shooting her out there. That's going to be that the strength right now of Rose and Luma. Boba can space out with Luma. But, oh! But that lowered ceiling. Yep. And a fresh up air. He saved that up air this entire time so that it would be fresh for that uh, for that kill right there. Because otherwise, you know, people can live until 1.30. That's two games on the side oh. of UC Smash. Red team, I mean, they're not playing poorly. No. I think it's just these, these very small moments where Zig ends up getting gimped a little bit too early. Uh, Bulba ends up not making it back yep. with the recovery. They're just a little bit too afraid of, of the green team offstage. Other than but, that, uh, these games have been right down to the wire every single time. 
and that's what we like to see here is these exciting matches where these teams keep adapting to one another and doing their best to try and pull out a victory because no one wants to get sent into losers. Mm -hmm. Oh, now we have double Diddy Kong. Interesting that they're going for a switch to double Diddy. That, I mean, usually you end up switching after losing a game, and I feel like they've they, they've won the last two. There's no real reason to switch over to Ness. Unless they feel like it's an adaptation thing. You don't want them to be planning for a Ness. I mean, you want them to be planning for a Ness, and then you switch over to Diddy, and now they don't know what to do. Probably the tactic the green team is trying to do here. And it's not like DSS has a bad Ness either. It was a character that he was trying to pick up for a little while as well. And he was actually doing pretty well in tournament with it, I, with, it, uh, with it as well. Let's see how that Diddy ends up working out in this match. I mean, down throw to up air is going to be a, a true combo now, because if you down throw, another Diddy can get the up air. Oh my goodness. Uh, and that's very, very strong, because whoever's up air is fresh can end up getting kills at like 90%. Throwing Zig off stage and being able to go out a little bit farther than uh, the Ness can. <laughs> It's going to help out a lot. Oh, yeah, most definitely. Uh, Zig with that little Mac recovery, unfortunately. But he died at a respectable uh, percent, at least, 125. Oh, you cannot re-grab the ledge again, especially against a little Mac. Especially, because <laughs> Zig is a punish master. There is no time for you to make flubs, because he's going to be laying down as much damage and knockback as... As Mac has in his arsenal. Yeah, if you re-grab the ledge again, you lose that invincibility. And he ate a down smash for it. Uh-oh. You see both off stage. Oh, getting Rehai in. makes a mistake off stage there, and now it is three socks to four. Not too bad of a situation if they can get Zig off stage and get a Gimp. It's very easy for uh, Diddy to do. But with that tail punch in store, whew, narrowly missing DSS and uh, three high. <laughs> Luckily, because that, that would have taken a stock and made this game very heavily favored on oh, the right yeah. side. Oh, oh, that super armor doing work once again. Zig just is, he's a master of his character. Mm -hmm. He knows when exactly to use those smash attacks so that he can move through that up B, when he can move through his opponent's attacks. He's using, he's a true counter attacker in that respect. And that's probably one of the strongest things about Lomac. That super armor, being able to absorb that single hit, and of course dishing back a lot of damage, a lot of the knockback. Double Diddy seems to be working out a lot better right now, but the red team is far ahead of the green team. Oh. Being that three high is at 114%. Both members, both monkeys on their last <laughs> stocks here. Smart thing the green team was doing there, trying to focus on Zig to set up for the Rosaluma kill. But at this point, it's a 2v1. I believe 3 high is on his own. Well, DSS actually. Oh, yeah, DSS. Now, there is an opportunity here, but it's going to be extremely difficult. Rosalina Luma can rack on so much damage, especially at low percent. And uh, Zig. At 64, you're not going to get a kill, possibly a Gimp. And with that get up on stage into that up smash, uh, will that do was, the job. That was three consecutive up smashes. I thought the uh, third one wouldn't have enough knockback because it staled. Because he used it like two times before, but getting up into a uh, half charge, three quarters charge up smash, that's not going to do the job. Especially when Luma's there. It's that knockback. Yeah. Knockback increase. Yup. Boba is like the only Rosaluma player in NorCal, really, yeah. that I've seen. He, and he is a darn a good one. Yeah. <laughs> the uh, I hate, I, oh my goodness. A Rosalina Luma is not the funnest thing in the world to fight against. All right, we're going to be moving into game four. Halberd? Halberd. It's two in favor of the green team, one in favor of Red. And... This is the counter pick for the green team. They really like the stage. But once again, there's small ceiling, small yep. sides. Yep. The blast zones are very close. And uh, Diddy's going to have a great time here with up airs. But Rosa Luma will as well. As mm -hmm. <laughs> Rosa Luma will oh, as well. She's going to love this stage. Right that, uh, she almost killed off of the top just earlier. Uh-oh, there goes Luma. Bye, Luma. 
this is a good position for the green team to be in. Oh, when most definitely. Boba is alone. It's going to be a lot easier to put pressure on him. Zig's going to have a hard time because of all the transformations that will be going on. Hopefully he's had some practice on this stage, but right now, the damage is in favor of the red team. Mm -hmm. DSS trying to pressure Boba off stage, but it's... I mean, her recovery is going to make it back from anywhere. Oh, yeah. On, no, she on this she has, stage. like, one of the best recoveries in the game, hands down. Oh, that was a great up by Zig, almost killing, uh, almost killing DSS off of the top. Rehi ends up losing his first stock there. And DSS is trying to get some edge guards. It's looking pretty good right now. Uh, Boba trying to get uh, DSS off of the stage using uh, Rosalina's down B to actually absorb the PK Thunder 2 and gipping him outright. Oh, we tried to go for the pivot grab, but he ends up whiffing because of it and ends up getting grabbed himself. Oh, wow, that was a great way by Boba. That was one of the, that was a standoff. <laughs> <laughs> DSS stood in his shield and Bubba was like, I'm going to wait for you to move. I know I'm going to get you. Ended up getting a grab. But there's a slight lead for the, the green team here. Mm -hmm. Ness could easily die on this stage at any point in time. This oh, single up air or up smash would be able to take it. Or getting it like that. Oh, Free High almost ended up getting a nice little uh, little gimp there on Boba. Probably would have been able to make it back, though, still. Rosaluma has that great recovery. A forward smash coming out of Free High. Zig and DSS are going at it one on one until hopefully not a kill there. Those team hits are very, very strong. Nice roll and a back throw coming out of DSS. Yeah, it's, you have to be really careful about not getting grabbed as a, against a Ness, especially on this stage. He died at 98% on the edge as something you definitely don't want to do against a uh, Ness player. Stocks are tied, but percent is not looking too good for Rosaluma. Rosalina is now alone, which is going to make it a bit difficult for zoning. Mm -hmm. But Boba looks like, oh, he's not having too Ooh. tough of a time here. He was almost actually able to edge guard Ness, but um, DSS keeping his double jump so he could do double jump up there and make sure to get, uh, get Boba off of him so he couldn't absorb his PK Thunder 2. If DSS can get a grab on Rosaluma... And there yep, it is. <laughs> that'll be the stock there. Now it is three stocks. Make that two stocks to two. And Little Mac has a KO punch. And, oh, wow, what an amazing play right there. He gets an up smash. One grab will lead to a KO punch here. And that would be the red team's victory. Rosaluma is at low percent. Little Mac a little bit high, but the 2v1 situation is always in favor of the two. And that's oh. it. That down B just, like I said before, it's able to absorb the PK Thunder 2. Yeah. And it's just able to gimp Ness outright, and he's not able to do anything about it. It has a lot of reach, as you were able to see there. After a really strong 2-0 from the green team, mm -hmm. now it's a 2-2. Yep. It came back. Uh-oh. We are in a 2-2 situation. The green team has got to be feeling the pressure right now. Who knows how this game is going to go. And the Twitch hat goes wild over the, uh, the down B kill. That was amazing. It was. Well, back to Smashville. <laughs> back to Smashville. The home of the UC boys. <laughs> they don't live. They should just be the Smashville. <laughs> team, team Smashville Smash. I don't know. Because the UC Smashville. Look, they got the team combos <laughs> in the middle set and ready to go. Laying on mad percent right now. Zig in a bad spot, but having that additional platform is going to be nice. Oh, and that down begin once Boba. again. Boba is not going to let those, those up bees go anymore. That mm -hmm. gravitational pull is so effective against DSS offstage. Nice back that throw was, there. Uh, that was a great back throw, grabbing him right out of the air. Right, because on that platform, in that particular spot, killing at 88, very, very oh, strong. Oh. Red team is up by one stock. But Zig is at 133. A nice tilt at this point would end up killing. Red team has great stage control right now as well. Oh, another back throw. You know what? I wish there was a back throw counter for DSS, because he gets like four per match. 
Oh, you can struggle out before you get grabbed. You can, <laughs> that's like the only thing that you could really do in this game. Or try your best not to get grabbed, but it's going to be really hard against this green team. Oh, yeah. Or laying down pressure. The game is very, very even right now, though. The green team does not want to go off stage. And... Oh. Boba is such a threat off stage. Oh yeah, Mo most definitely. DSS is now having to save his jumps the best he can because and Boba is waiting for those upbeats to come out using that gravitational pull. Zig being pushed into a corner. Oh, oh but, but that down air. Boba, he's just a monster, man. He's doing so much work right now. Even one of the games before, he tacked on like 40% on each of them just by himself while trying to edge guard. Ooh, but that back throw, of course. That's three. Three back throws this game, but Boba takes out another stock. Up smash. It is a full one stock across the board right now. Whoever ends up probably killing one of the, uh, their opponents will probably end up winning this game. The 2v1 for both of these guys is very strong. It is. Boba is in the zone right now, though. Just playing an amazing doubles game, bro. He's actually a set. The entire set he's been playing really well. He has been doing just so much work. Three high taking a lot of pressure. It is, ooh, Boba taking out three high. Now it's a 2v1. A, it's still possible being that Zig can be easily gimped, even sometimes just from a throw. A back throw on the, on the ledge. That's going to take out Mac. You but, don't even have to go off stage at that point. But that is the, the same thing that can be said uh, from uh, from TSS. If he messes up his PK Thunder 2, it's just going to get gravitational pulled. And he can't really try and play the ledge like he normally does. And is a gravitational pull going to come out? Oh. oh. He up beat out of fear. He, If he just down beat right then and there, the match would have been over. Right. But, oh, uh -oh. Zig is Zig's dead. dead. It's a 1v1, and the percent is closing in. DSS putting on the pressure, sticking to that middle of the stage, knowing that if he can, you know, use those mm -hmm. disjointed hitboxes, that might give him a little bit of an advantage, but Luma provides that same thing for Rosalina. Oh, this is going to be really, really close. If Boba is able to throw uh, throw DSS off stage, oh, no, Luma killed himself. Oh, that down smash, Boba fades back out oh. of fear. And the game goes to Team UC Smash in a 2v1 going in the opposite direction.